Welcome everyone to the work session of the Board of Commissioners Harper Township on this September 5th, 2017. The Board of Commissioners uh, met prior to this meeting in an executive session to discuss a legal matter. And uh, Mr. Sullivan, thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. If those who can, if you would, uh, oh, I'm sorry, roll call. Roll call. Mr. D'Amelio? Here. McCloskey? Here. Mr. Siegel? Here. Mr. Lewis? Here. Mr. Holmes? Here. here. Mr. McGarrity? Here. Mr. Wexler? Present. And Mr. Oliva? Here. Mr. Connell? Here. Um, if we could please stand in the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would like to, Chief, prior to the Pledge of Allegiance, if we could just take a few seconds and um, reflect on, on Texas for the... Uh, people down there. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief. Okay, the, open up our meeting. Uh, we have the privilege tonight, uh, the honor to have Phil Goldsmith come before us, who is the new president of the board of the library. Uh, Mr. Goldsmith, the podium is yours. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you tonight. Well, to personally thank you for my appointment to serve on the Board of Trustees of the Haverford Township Free Library. Uh, as you know, I was elected President of the Trustees at the Board's July 19th meeting. And among the most important challenges and opportunities facing the library is the renovation of our facility that was last re renovated almost four decades ago. We are grateful to the commissioners for having approved funds to do a major renovation. As you know, the work on the plans for the renovation was commenced some time ago. Our prior president was notified by the commissioners by letter on February 17th, almost six months ago, to go pencils down. Since then, there has been very little work performed on the renovation plans. I am respectfully requesting that the commissioners now authorize us to go pencils up so we can commence our planning process. Having assumed my new responsibilities almost two months ago, I have become increasingly concerned that the lack of a definite time frame jeopardizes the project itself, as well as other parts of the library's operation, including staffing, the initiation of a director search, planning for the providing of services when the library is eventually shut down during the renovation process, and the planning and initiation of a very important capital fund campaign. While the architect Bernardin has begun its pencil, its work before pencils down, there are still almost four months of work to be done, including getting the completed architectural plan signed and sealed. That completed work is essential for construction documents to be finished, a prerequisite for us to create an RFP for invited contractors to bid. <coughs> in addition, the ability to reach out to movers and storage companies and receive definitive quotes is also hindered as long as we don't have a time frame to, beginning the to begin the planning process project in earnest of how we will operate while the current library facility is shut down, which will be one tall order. It is our hope to begin construction by the end of August 2018. Waiting until then will allow us to keep the library open during the summer months, its busiest time of the year. Waiting till August also assures us that the municipal building will have been vacated, thus eliminating any potential conflict or inconvenience between the township 
and lively. If we are given the, the go-ahead to proceed now, the funds used to pay for our ar architectural planning will come from the township's Keystone Grant portion and the money the library has set aside for the project. Eventually, additional funds, of course, will come from the township as have previously been pledged. Let me assure you that the construction of this important project to the library and the township itself will be done within the funds previously allocated by the township. To the extent that the renovation plans exceed that amount, it will be on us. It will be the responsibility of the library to raise additional funds. I also want to let you know that I'm very impressed with the library's building committee, which is comprised of volunteer professionals very familiar with construction, design, and planning, and who are dedicated to the Haverford Township community. We are fortunate to have these volunteers. So I thank you for your consideration and look forward to receiving the go-ahead so we can proceed. I'd be glad to answer any questions anyone has. Yes, Phil, uh, with, with pencils up, what would you project your budget to be the kind of a range uh, between uh, between now and August when you start construction what what do you, what do you anticipate oh, I, I don't I don't have an answer we, we can get you an answer in terms of completing the four months worth of work for the uh, architectural renderings and, and so forth uh, my guess is that's probably about two hundred three hundred thousand dollars but that could get that can come out of the Keystone grant right so It'll that's come out uh, of the Keystone or the, the five hundred thousand dollars at that the yeah. library itself has put up, yes. It's so you may not up. be back to this board yeah. until? The, the five million, which eventually will yeah. show up. Okay. So you may not be looking for cash from us for some time? Uh, yes. Given, given those resources? Yes. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Holmes? Um, Phil, do you have, um, are there current plans to engage in uh, fundraising from the library side for purposes of you know, increasing this project or supplementing? Yes. As you may or may not know, the, the, the library had uh, retained uh, a, a very reputable fundraising firm. I think it's Schultz and Williams. He's it's, it's well known in the area. Uh, they did some preliminary work, and that, that contract, for reasons I'm not quite sure, of, was terminated. Uh, I have reviewed the report. There's, there's a, a good deal of uh, good information in there. Uh, I'm meeting with someone uh, later this week or next week, I forget, uh, who is, was one of the key fundraisers on the Haverford YMCA project, so she knows the community. I'm out uh, reaching out to other people that I know are experienced in this field, uh, but we have work cut out. The library's never done a major fundraising uh, campaign, so we have to build an infrastructure. We do have a software uh, uh, program in place we have to start to use and so forth but uh, uh, we have to, to, to raise the, the money uh, is it your intention to go back to this um, fundraising outfit that I had don't, worked? I don't know yet sure. I, I'm not that far along and I, I, th I want to talk to others that have you know have worked in this area for example to have for why which I think that, you know uh, and get some sense uh, from her and so forth but uh, you know, we're going to need a, some sort of professional to help us. This is this is a major deal, and I think they estimated we could probably, in a three-year period of time, uh, do about a million and a half dollars. Uh, I think that's a that's a good start. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, Phil, I would uh, I would hope uh, that in the, the uh, coming months before we go any further with the library and we talk about different funds and things like that I hope that we'll consult the board here and we will discuss uh, any problems that we foresee and we can discuss it with the library and uh, hopefully we can resolve it because uh, we don't want to throw bad money after good money I, I couldn't agree more and I, I have reached out to all of you and uh, I said I'd love to sit down with you and I'm, I'm open I'm fortunate I'm retired so I have some time on my hands or I did. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, absolutely. This this has got to be a joint, you know, uh, project, and uh, it's for the community. And uh, as I say, you don't bite the hand that feeds you. So I'm. You'll find me a, a willing okay. listener and talk. That's great. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. Phil, just 
Thank, thank you so much. We are really lucky to have you on, on this board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight and good luck. And that'll be that could be done. It need be next, oh, next I, I week. Had a, I had a motion to the next on a resolution. Monday, well, Monday night's agenda will be on. I, I think um, I, I don't even know. Uh, Ken, Kelly might fill us out since I'm the library board. We we've already approved the funding and everything. I think it was the request of the township manager. I think you're the one that would just coordinate with them and say go back. If the timetable meets what your schedule is, uh, our vacation of this building and this complex, so we have the temporary space, I think it's coordination of staff. We've already approved the funding. The, the resolution and ordinances are already done. It's just a matter of this is a staff uh, I thought it was looking for a vote of confidence as well. Yeah, but it, I mean, that's what we can discuss that, but I think it's just a matter of Larry and uh, yeah, yeah, Amy, our finance, money, yeah. getting those things in order for them. Uh, this is the best time to spend. If that schedule works for us with the plan borrowing and the municipal bonding, I think it's going to be good. It gives us the extra time. It doesn't put the library under the gun to, to try and move out of here at the end of the year uh, because, you know, the delay in the township building. So I think it's a, it's a fresh start, and just the coordination of the existing projects now becomes it's, it's pretty much a staff project there. Yeah, 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 but I would feel a little bit comfortable. I mean, uh, oh no, we're gonna we'll speak about motion it. Yeah. for yeah. next Mike's meeting. Just we'll give you a vote of confidence yeah. if that's what you want. Yeah. But, it's, but it's I think that's simple. where we are. I, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm gratefully enthused about this new working together between the board, at the library, and the township staff to be on the same sheet of music for this whole project. That's that's a big plus here. Yeah. Yes, it so. is. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, you know. Okay. Again, thank you very much, and good luck. Looking forward to working with you. Got your work cut out for you now. Uh, oh, you're on you vacation. Be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. Happy you anniversary. <laughs> happy anniversary, Phil, and you can take off. <laughs> Problem is, you didn't. People are happy for another 50 years. Right. Thank you, Phil. You got thrown, it got thrown right, on them. for coming tonight. I'll talk to you later. Uh, let's see. Next on the agenda here tonight, we have the East construction manager update and uh, Mr. Ryan or Mr. Brennan, excuse me, Ryan Brennan. Thank you. Good evening. Um, for those of you who were able to attend the, uh, the walkthrough, I hope you appreciated getting a look at, um, you know, what it actually looks like instead of just being up here talking about it and driving past and seeing some photos. Um, we do not have any change orders um, to bring to the board for approval at this time for this month. The contingency has increased slightly. It's up to a 63% exposure overall. Um, some of these costs are being negotiated and being discussed. That's why there's nothing for approval at this very moment. Um, as far as the progress of work, the first floor is had an above ceiling inspection and the electrical underwriter will be out on Thursday. All the lights and occupancy sensors are installed, sprinkler heads are installed, um, grills, registers, and diffusers are all in, and um, all the last bit of items are being tied up now to allow ceiling tile to be dropped in that area, and then the floor finishes will follow. Um, all casework is wrapped up. They have installed the lockers in the two locker rooms, um, toilets, and um, uh, all the other accessories, toilet accessories, grab bars, um, paper towels, et cetera are all installed. That's on the first floor. Um, for utilities, you may have noticed there were some traffic issues this past week. They tied in the sewer connection at Manoa Road. So that is completed. Now all the fixtures can be energized, turned on, and tested. Um, we find out tomorrow when the uh, gas service will be terminated into the building with the gas main um, so that the generator and everything else can be started up and exercised to get ready for completion. Uh, the second floor, the drywall is about 95% complete. They're taping and finishing that, and they're going to start finishes in there very shortly with painting followed up by ceilings. Um, the overhead rough-ins are about 90% complete at this, at this moment up there. Um, they're going ready to finish the parking lot. Now the fuel tank is done. They're going to finish the curbing, start that on Monday, finish that up, and then finish the, uh, the lower parking lot to get that ready to allow the uh, movers to come in and uh, at the end of the month to be able to start moving into the building and occupying it, which will be at the same time that the punch list will be worked on by the contractors. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I was not able to attend the meeting. Uh, however, like I've asked frequently over the many months here, 
Where do we sit with this schedule? Where, where, currently, where are we there with that? Currently the first floor is showing completion. Um, the, the contractor submitted a schedule that was rejected. The first floor is showing completion. We've discussed it and they, their superintendent has agreed to it that that'll be completed, substantially completed by September 28th. And then the second floor, the remainder of the building will be the end of December. Um, those are kind of the dates that have held. Um, it was originally at the last discussion when we were asking and the contractor was requesting additional time because some of the impacts early on, that was early September and early December. Kind of the schedule slipped slightly from that point, uh, about three weeks. So all the documents, or all, all the scheduling has been substantiated all through it? Correct. You've, you've, okay. Does anybody have any further questions? Thank you very much for coming this evening. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Engelthal, also thank you very much for coming this evening. Appreciate, just wanna note that you're in attendance tonight. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Okay, next on the agenda here, we have the police department uh, crime update. Chief Viola. Mr. Department report for oh, the I'm month sorry, of August. Chief, excuse me. Uh, Chief, I apologize. Mr. President, could I ask that we go into executive session right now? It has to do with potential litigation, and it's important we have this discussion right now. And I've asked the solicitor, and she agrees. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. We will be in recess till further notice. Okay, we bring this... Uh, this meeting back to session and the um, Board of Commissioners met in executive session to discuss uh, a litigation matter and moving forward on the agenda we do have um, our construction team here and we have a discussion for that at the all the way down at the bottom of the at the end of our uh, agenda so while we have you gentlemen here what we would like to do is move the, that forward on the agenda um, to do it go presently. And uh, if I could just have uh, all those that are in favor for moving that agenda item f forward. Aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you very much. Um, to open this discussion, uh, I would please, like uh, Mrs. Swadup, if you would please come forward to for opening. Um, yes, the township construction manager has submitted a proposal for um, a construction phase contract extension um, that would take the overall project from the original completion date. Now, there, there are two floors and there was phase completion. So this is, you might get a little bit cumbersome to, to walk through, but there were two floors. They were supposed to have been completed the whole building in September, September 17th. This construction period now goes out through the end of December, and that is for both floors. There's a, right now, a tentative substantial completion date of the first floor of September 28th. Um, and there is a substantial completion date, we believe, December 30th for the second, so that's the entire building. Um, and that is, we went from September 17th to December 30th. That's the, the deviation in the schedule, however number of days that is, however many days. I believe the construction managers identified that as 94 days. 94 days behind schedule. Can you explain to us what goes into making a project, and in particular this project, so far behind schedule? Well, I'm going to ask um, Mr. Engel, who's here, um, to, to speak to that in some general terms, um, because there have been some delays, but I, you know, because we have contracts with five prime contractors on the job, just very general terms. 
Evening. And again, as Lori said, we're going to do general terms because I don't want to get too specific if there is potential claims and litigations down the road in public. But there was an initial... Uh, but I, if I can remind you, this is the only chance the public gets to sure. see and understand what's going on here. So, you know, you're smart enough to be, to be careful, but, you know, err on the side of, 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 of giving good information. That's fine. That people can get their, their hands and feet around. So there was an initial uh, claim submitted by the uh, general contractor, Stubner, for 72 additional days. And some of the items were delayed in permitting. Uh, some of them were some design changes for the site work that had to be done that created additional work. And um, we believe some of that was their own fault um, and some of their own delays. And I believe uh, there was a recommendation from the uh, architect as to what should be approved. And I believe that's still in negotiations. That has not been totally settled. It hasn't been resolved. It hasn't been resolved. And, and for people to understand, in, in a situation like that with delays, it's a, it's a, it's a normal occurrence for, um, actually, let's take a giant step back. You are our construction manager. That's correct. So you represent the township. Yes. Um, and you are basically our, um, you're our person on the job. We're your eyes and ears on the job. Watching the primes. Um, watching everybody doing this job. So if when you describe delays and you said there was effort to compromise, just describe to people what, you know, what that means. Just because folks just hear delay and they hear July and then they hear December and they're going to fear the worst. Well, when, we, when you go out to bid, you, you have to assume a certain start date uh, so that the bidders can bid that. If things like a per, getting final permitting slow things down and starts... And the, and the uh, job starts a little later, that pushes the job back. Um, in the construction period, if they run into unforeseen conditions where they have to um, do more work they anticipated, the, the additional work could push them things back, especially if it's on the critical path, meaning that has to be done before future work can be done. And then if there's some design issues, which there were, um, and some rework that had to be done, and, and that created additional work, which included additional days. Then there's also the contractor's responsibility to coordinate his own subcontractors and to make sure the work gets done in a timely manner and they have enough manpower on the job. That can create a delay. That wouldn't be the township's delay. That would be the contractor's delay. All those things. So you could have. So you could you could start working on a foundation, find out you have bedrock you didn't know was there, and that could be a one month delay digging that kind of stuff out. That's something people can't anticipate. Yes. But on a Monday where the electricians ought to show up and start putting in electrical equipment, they don't show up. That's the contractor's problem. Absolutely. Or if there's utilities that are in the way of the foundations that have to be redesigned and relocated before the foundations can start, that will be an unforeseen condition and, and the contractor would be entitled to some delay. So it's not abnormal for there to be A, delays of some significance and B, a an allocation between an owner like a township and a contractor between who's responsible for what yeah unfortunately it's, it's pretty typical in a construction project because it's complex is it's out in the weather there's a lot of in, influences that can they can uh, influence the schedule is what has happened here so far I and mean, we've all gotten calls from Constituents have said this is the fourth day I've driven by the project and I don't see anybody Nobody's doing anything. There. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, a few people that were there. Yeah, yeah I mean, every, yeah, we, like I've, three or four. I'm almost, not pretending to speak on behalf of everybody, but I think I speak with one voice on that. That we've all had that. We've all heard that complaint. We've all seen the complaint. Mm -hmm. Have mm -hmm. the delays in this been unusual or atypical from what your experience is in other? Uh, construction projects and is there a difference between construction projects for government where maybe we don't play enough hardball and construction in the private industry where maybe they have you know better tactics well the biggest difference between public and private is you have to open up your bids to anybody that can get a bond in the private industry they can select the contractors they want to work with that's the biggest difference in the two and that impacts sometimes the schedule you know that you get done 
uh, is, is there were times on this project that we thought that it was not typical that the project should be moving forward and we documented that with the contractor. And, and that is your function, I mean, to, to do that documentation and to be watching the townships back and representing the township's interest throughout this process? Yes. Um, does, that 94, I, does that 94 days, though, seem like where's the bar? How would we set it? Would we say that it's where we sit at this project? Is 94 days unheard of or is it acceptable? In, in it's 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 on the upper end of for a building for a construction for a construction of this, project to this size this it's side. on the yeah. upper end of it's a little more than than we would have expected for sure and again you know the important thing here is it's it's not easy it's not one person or one entity that caused the, the delay there's multiple reasons for all the different delays and that's what makes it complex can you just are, are there some of the, what are some of the Bigger things are there that were actually moved it to the moved it up to the 94 day mark. What was some of the things that you can think of offhand that I remember before we when we met, you know, and it was three months behind, and if you could come, you had to come up to the to the podium, please. What was the driving force here for such a? Um, when they originally requested the 72 days, the main issues were. The, as David mentioned, the, the permitting first, the, the conservation district permit was not received, and then when that permit came out, it went from one site to a site that then became four phases of erosion and sediment control. And there was a cost associated with that, and there's also a number of days associated with that. There's also, when they started to open up the parking lot to stadium, they ran into a gas line that was that was there that was not shown anywhere on any drawings or anything like that that had to be relocated um, there was an electrical service that was in the way of excavating for the bench back for the building that also was a large item that caused a caused a delay as it was a cost issue and an issue of what do we do how do we figure this out and what what needs to happen and you know keeping cost and time in, in mind Yeah, that was a minor. That was now, are you uh, judging by the number of days they asked for 72 and we're, we're at 94, um, what would you attribute that, that time to? I mean, they've asked for at maximum 72, and we're, we're, we're not even agreed upon that number, but we're at 92 now. Or, I'm sorry, 94. I think, as, as Dave has mentioned, some of it's attributable certainly to the contractor. Um, and then some of it also could go back to some items that are, you know, whether they're errors or missions or whether items in pre-construction that did not get communicated properly and did not get put on the drawings that are now being added after the fact or some owner's work that, that occurred that then lumped in another contractor that pushed out the schedule as well. Okay, now is that, that's on them, right? Uh, it, them if well, I know, I know that the gas line and some of the other things, that's... That would but be if there's something that was, you know, something that, that's been added, you know, when you look through the cost lot, mm -hmm. all those items are cost issue items. They're all associated. They all come with time as well, typically. Correct. So something that you catch down the line and it's a, you know, material change or something like that that, you know, isn't installed already. But a lot of it is at, is, is at work. Okay. But without asking you to, because I don't, I don't think you want to engage in any... <clears throat> day-by-day -day analysis with us or allocation uh, what's important for the public to know and frankly it's important for all of us to know is to make sure that um, whatever the ultimate resolution is I assume that every single day of delay um, our construction manager is documenting what needs to be documented you know putting the blame where the blame ought to go and just kind of laying the paper trail that's necessary for what I'm sure is every inevitable fight between a contractor and an owner at the end of the job that has a decent delay. In, Can in we count on that? Uh, yeah, we have, we have documentation. We, we don't have every single day of documentation, but we have every single day of what happened on the job that can be used to document why the delay occurred. So in other words, if, the ex if it's a beautiful day out and the excavator didn't show up, we have that documented. Okay. So that's the kind of documentation. As I mentioned to Lori, it's probably a good time to sit down 
and come up with uh, a, a notice to the contractor because as we said when when we negotiated but didn't finalize it of where the schedule moved we had picked a September 4th completion date and that held all the way through to the end of July and then they shifted it well it's September 5th I think we should go on notice that the job should have been done on September 5th and it's not and now it's it's beyond that point well, say that into the camera in case they're watching, and then also uh, obviously discuss this with our assistant township manager, um, because it would seem to me, I agree with you, that um, the time has come, and uh, my concern is just to make sure the time has not come and gone um, to put these folks on notice of, you know, of the attribution of any of this delay. And right, I understand uh, excavators are supposed to be here on a sunny Monday and they're not here on a sunny Monday. But um, to the extent that the prime wasn't there that day because they were doing something else and they expected the excavator to come, I assume somebody told them that they didn't come. And I know that's just an example for the purpose of this discussion, but I'm assuming whatever diary you're keeping, and I'm not suggesting every single day you put them on a notice of a violation, but any kind of event that's taken place that isn't apparent to them, I assume you are you are routinely uh, everything's them. apparent to them they're there every day they know what's going on so again i think the key now is to put them on notice structure that you know ha have that come from uh the township you know solicitor potentially that you know even though we haven't finally negotiate your claim your schedule on in january showed a september 4th completion date and you haven't made that september 4th completion date How much confidence can we have that they are now, that they are proceeding on a predictable schedule and that there's no more foreseeable, unforeseeable circumstances that are going to come up here and screw this up? I mean, let's assume we don't have a hundred year storm, a, a three feet of snow in October or an earthquake. I mean, are the things like having permit problems, finding a gas line you didn't know about, foundational issues, those are all kind of early threshold issues before you can break ground are we past the majority of those things that can now delay the finish of this job i believe so and, and we think it's very reasonable they can get done the first floor by september 28th there's only one issue that we have a big concern on and we put them on notice is in order to install the floor finishes that concrete has to be at a certain percentage moisture percentage and we told them that they need to do whatever it takes to get that. And if it means put, use an additional type of adhesive or sealer or get additional air conditioning in there, they need to do that. Uh, that's the only thing that we know of right now that could hold things up. Everything else well, at least we're not in hurricane season, so yeah. it won't be wet every <laughs> single day from now until October 31st. I think the the, that second floor should be done in less than three months. There's, you know, there's, there's not that much more to finish up, and three months is a long time period. Well, since we, hopefully all of us, are going to be sitting on that second floor, I'm hoping the concrete cures before they put the floor on it. Um, the second floor right. is going to be better than the first. The slab on grade right. is t typically where you have a little more trouble getting the moisture. Okay. Out. Has the gentleman, has this discussion uh, been satisfied for you at this time? Is yeah, I, I would say so right now. Anybody wish anything further? Gentlemen, Mr. Engel, Mr. Brennan, thank you very much for coming this evening. We appreciate you coming up and answering our questions. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Uh, okay. Next on the agenda is the, uh, as we said, the police department crime update. Unfortunately, Chief Viola had to leave. Uh, due to a situation, and therefore I believe the township manager is going to f file this report. Yeah, I think I can figure this one out. The chief left me the report, and I'll go through it uh, quickly and see if I can answer any questions, but the police department issued 212 parking tickets for the month. Uh, there was 240 traffic citations and 166 written warnings. Uh, there was a robbery on the uh, August of 17th to CVS. It started out as a retail theft. It was a suspect was a white female between 50 and 60. 
Uh, she implied she had a knife when confronted by a store employee outside, but there was no weapon uh, observed. Uh, there was also an attempted strong arm robbery on August the 17th and sept on a SEPTA bus along Westchester Pike passengers re uh, reported being confronted by two other passengers who went into his pockets and attempted to take the cell phone. Uh, there were five burglaries for the month, um, 100 block of Ellis Road, 400 block of Colfax, 600 block of Layside uh, Avenue, um, 17 East Manoa Road, and the 600 block of Westchester Pike. On Ellis Road, it was an unsecure uh, residence. Uh, $1,300 was taken. Uh, on Colfax, uh, entry was through an unlocked first floor window. There was jewelry and change, change out of a jar taken. August the 25th, the Lakeside Avenue, again, it was an unsecure residence. $13 was taken along with a backpack worth $50. Manoa Road, uh, it was four century, a PlayStation was taken, uh, but uh, that was a, there was a, an arrest, uh, an other tenant was confessed uh, to those charges. And the last one, again, on the uh, Westchester Pike, uh, there was a hidden key used, the gold watch, change container, uh, some beer, and that was also um, addressed by the police department. It was a grandson who was a juvenile, and I guess the victims uh, refused to um, make any charges. There's four attempted burglaries, 900 block of the Railroad Avenue, noise was heard at the front door, suspect observed and walked away. Uh, on, again, the 11th of uh, the month, 1200 block of Bonaire Road reported an attempted burglary. Further investigation showed this to be a theft by an employee who's being charged with the theft. 400 block of Kenmore Road, kitchen window was pushed up overnight and they have prints and sent that off to be identified. And then the last one was uh, 1700 Vernon Road. Handprints were located on an un unlocked window. Uh, vehicle thefts, there was four. Um, Tumbridge Road, uh, although it was unfounded, owner filed a false report and is being charged by the police. Uh, 400 block of Sa Sagamore, unsecured vehicle, keys inside. That vehicle was recovered in Philadelphia. 200 block of Myrtle Avenue, unlocked, um, where keys were left inside. That vehicle was also recovered in Philadelphia. The last one was on Pearson Lane. Keys were um, in an unlocked vehicle. An adult and a juvenile were arrested when the vehicle was recovered in Philadelphia. And last, there was uh, theft from vehicles. 800 block of Groad Place, unlocked uh, medical equipment was taken. Uh, 100 block of Mallard. Uh, unlocked door and loose change was taken. And then another one on 100, a mallard was unlocked, loose change, and 100 block of Gilmore <coughs> Road. Again, the vehicle was unlocked, gift cards, and a checkbook. And that's all I have for the chief. Thank you, Mr. Gentile. I, I just give me a second here. I, <clears throat> I just wanted to warn people um, with the police report on. The, uh, the other night at the Glen, um, there was two juveniles who were involved in a, in a fight, and um, the call came in as um, a possible knife. Um, person who was viewing it from across the street said that it was a possible knife. That turned into, on Facebook, confirmed stabbing in the park. So At the Glen. <clears throat> yeah, at the Glen. So... Uh, Facebook blew up people I got I must have gotten five or six messages within within a 30 second period and and I called the chief and he's no absolutely not and he took me through so I messaged everybody back and then Sergeant Hagan not Sergeant Hagan Deputy Chief Hagan um, wrote a post to uh, to Facebook um, to to tell people that there, there wasn't, but just be really careful when you're posting things. That really, there's a lot of people, I mean, that post went from, from um, two or three to 150, and then after Sergeant Hagan, it, the post stopped. So, Sergeant, again, um, Deputy Chief Hagan. So be careful what you're posting. Make sure that it's true, just because you may, make sure you confirm that. Um, you can always call, or I mean, people called me, and uh, texted and emailed uh, about that issue, but make sure that you 
it is confirmed before you put that out on Facebook because a lot of people were, were scared. I mean, a stabbing in at the Glen, which is, and the Glen is inside of a, inside of a neighborhood. So something like that is very scary. But so everybody knows there was no stabbing. Neither juvenile had a knife on them and there was no knife recovered. We even had the police dogs out there searching. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to get the, you know. The Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner, Mr. Holmes. Uh, would Chief Fiola, uh, would he have wanted us to announce tomorrow's arraignment? Um, I, I think we should. I mean, it's yeah, public. I, I mean, it, it involves, I, was, I guess, it involves the murder in the Sixth Ward. So. Going to have a press conference tomorrow. It's a press conference tomorrow? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So don't do it? No. So the press conference is before the arraignment? Yes. Well, tune in tomorrow. The Delaware County <laughs> District Attorney will be giving um, press conference news uh, about um, a suspect in a highly publicized and uh, very, uh, very tragic and violent act in Ardmore, and uh, we'll uh, all stay tuned. Uh, or, who may or may not be arraigned tomorrow morning? Um, <laughs> afternoon. Oh, the afternoon. The afternoon. I'm afternoon. sorry. In the afternoon. But what is worth noting, as long as we're on the subject, is that through the efforts of the Haverford Township Police Department, the Philadelphia Police Department, the U.S. Customs, I'm sorry, the uh, U.S. Marshal's, Marshal's Office, um, and uh, great cooperation between state, federal, and local authorities, the suspect of, uh, in the murder of John Lee um, on the uh, evening of, um, gosh, was it July 29th? Um, was apprehended in Georgia, um, has been uh, extradited from Georgia, and um, arrangements have been made for uh, uh, for the suspect um, who is in custody to be um, uh, to be arraigned for uh, the actions in Philadelphia as well as for the um, uh, the murder in uh, Ardmore. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Gentili, utility work. Uh, yes, sir. thank you. Uh, as this board and um, uh, our residents throughout the community uh, know, over the last uh, year, we've had an extensive amount of um, utility work being done throughout the township. Uh, un uh, unfortunately, at times, my office um, is becoming a spokesperson, which is inappropriate for um, the PICO uh, uh, folks. Uh, so I just wanted to bring again some updated information to this board and, and to the community. Um, as you're all aware, again, about a year ago, PICO invested in close to a $5 million um, gas line system enhancement. And basically what they're doing is we have pre-1900 cast iron gas pipes that are out throughout the township. And this is a big part. It's almost like a $150 million initiative that PICO is doing for infrastructure improvements. So this is like a five-year project for Haverford Township. And uh, it is uh, it is uh, uh, troubling at times because it, it's, it's creating uh, some quality of life issues for our residents, but it's a necessary improvement because it is an old town and we have a lot of old infrastructure. So it's, uh, it, it will improve services for the residents throughout Haverford Township and also improve the safety. So uh, to give you an idea, next year, uh, PICO will be coming to us and giving us some road permits and they'll be doing approximately five miles of additional gas mains. And again, that'll, that project will last for the next uh, four, possibly five years. Uh, they're completing up uh, a lot of work that they're doing now in sections throughout the township. But one important thing that I need to get out to the public uh, and to reiterate to, the, re reiterate to the board, under no away are we, the township, uh, my staff, um, or this board becoming spokespersons for PICO's representatives. And in no way is the township um, taking any ownership or have any ownership of these <coughs> initiatives. Um, this is a PICO project. And they are also working with Aqua because there's a number of Aqua projects that are going to happen over the next few years. So I know it's frustrating for the residents at time. We do our very best to report uh, one when we get it. Uh, any any information relating to this PICO projects throughout the township, but it, the, they literally change by the hour. You know, if, uh, I met P PICO today and they gave us an update on where they are on Eagle Road 
and where they are in Westgate Hills and where they are in different parts of the township. That Literally, that information they gave us today, when they open up a particular road, that, that work could, uh, or the timetable could change. They just don't know what they're going to be dealing with from time in, time out. So, um, but Larry, I hate to interrupt you, but what are they doing about the damage that they're calling, causing to residents' properties? How are they documenting that so that residents know that eventually the cracked pavements or curbs are going to be fixed? The, uh, Steve, that would be a question for them, but what they, they tell us... Can they come here? Excuse me? Can they come here? And, and I, I don't think it's appropriate for them to come here. It's really... At, at this juncture, so we can question. You can certainly question. Am I going to have to have them come next month at the next work session? But they, they, I am confident that they do document um, any damage. But it's it's up to the residents. No different than you having an issue with a u utility company. If right. you're not happy with Verizon or Comcast, there's a process for you to go through that. It's called the Public Utility Commission, and that's what we. We tell the residents when they call our office, yeah, if they're not getting satisfaction from any utility company, they should follow, follow it up with the Public Utility Commission, and then they will get, get. We cannot, the township staff can't be the in-between. Now, they identified um, most of that damage they do, and they're supposed to be um, communicating it with the residents. Now, I do know that any work that they do prior to establishing any work on any township road or state road, they issue... Um, uh, information. They drop it off at the door, whether it's a resident or a business. Uh, so that all that information, uh, telling telling them contacts who the residents should contact, are are in that. But if you if this board would wish, hey, Lyon, we, we put that a, on the website. Do they have an obligation to give that at least one copy of that to us to the township? They do. We actually do. When we get oh, that, yeah. we forward it out to the board. But they don't give but it just, to the just, local. Just, they don't give it to the ward commissioner. And a lot of times when that starts or something, you know, if I go to look for that information, we, yep, we I have can, to reach out to your office. We can certainly um, ask them to give, provide a better uh, form of communication so we can get that out. But as far as putting it on the website, no, because then we we then are telling the, the, the residents that we're taking ownership of this. This has got this. They have a pup. Their own, PICO has their own public utility uh, or their public relations department. If we put information out on the website, like then then we are potentially if that information changes, Mr. Connell, then we're we're not providing adequate um, information or accurate. to the residents. It literally could change day to day. To day. Who their representative? Who's who's their consultant? Yes. Their representative. All right, can I ask how it's being done? Can I ask you about the um, road resurfacing program? Uh, the, you know, the thing I hate is when. We resurface a road, and then some a utility comes along and opens it up. So, has that been an issue, or how do we make sure that doesn't happen? It, ha it has not. Uh, when I came on board, um, uh, we established immediately from 2007. I can't tell you what happened before that, but I have a map that's in my office. It was developed by Mr. Pannoni's office, and every road that we surf that we resurface uh, in Haverford Township, a township-owned road. Uh, we have a map. Uh, we have that colored. It's a color code map, and it's the dates. Any road that's that a utility company opens up within five years of that uh, road being resurfaced, they bought the entire road. We meet with Aqua and Pico twice a year. When I say we, myself, Mr. Dockerty, and uh, sometimes Mrs. Whittup, uh, if she's available, we'll sit with them, and they have that. They have that. It's updated every year. And they know that if they have to, they'll work around that as much as they can. But they're responsible for repaving, not just curb to curb. Curb to curb. If the roads, so, for example, on Buck Lane, they're going to be going down a portion of Buck Lane, on not quite in the gutter, probably about two feet mm -hmm. off the edge of the road. Are they responsible for paving a third of the road? Are they responsible for paving just that strip, or are they responsible? Percent of the road. Two percent of the road. If they have an so, opening so, more, so than they have to to the center line. Yes. So the center line will be paved. Okay. And, and a lot of this, uh, a lot of the work that they're doing over the next five years, it actually will uh, will save the township some funds as well because okay. they're doing so many roads. There's a lot of roads that we would eventually have to resurface 100 percent of the road. Yeah. And then we now we have to That's just do 50 yeah. percent. One of the things that we did last road program is we looked at, in fact, um, Commissioner McCluskey's uh, street was an example. Uh, we knew that, that that street was one of the roads that was supposed to be paid in 2017. We held off, we set the money aside, and we paid 
uh, Pico, when Pico went through, they, normally they would only have to do 50% of that road. They paved 100% of it. So we work as a, as a team when we, when we do uh, our road program. That's great. We, okay. we completed our road program in 2017. We don't have another one until 2019. We do one every other year. All right. But, Larry, so, thank you. Larry, just to sort of reiterate some of what you're saying, because, I mean, I know um, in my ward there's been a significant amount of PICO work done. And, and just, just so the residents know, I mean, we, we share, and, and I know Mr. Gentile shares in, in some of the frustration that everybody has been feeling. But, um, you know, the township... Is, is in a difficult position because we don't want to be a, a spokesman for PICO, but we also recognize that uh, th these are needed improvements and infrastructure improvements that need to be done. So uh, on, on one level, we don't, we don't want to speak for PICO, but we also, um, we, we also don't want to diminish the prog pr project or its need. Um, but on the other hand, it's important for, for residents to know um, that in no way does PICO come to us and seek permits. It's not like a regular contractor who would come to the township to get a permit to work. I mean, PICO uh, is, is run by the Public Utility Commission, and that, that is who has jurisdiction over PICO. We do not have jurisdiction over where PICO goes. And, and sort of taking Hereford Township out of it and looking at, at a, broad, a broad signal, because PICO deals with gas and electric, at, as a, as a community, we wouldn't want PICO to have to ask Springfield, Haverford, Upper Darby, and go to every single township that they needed to work on for gas mains to get approval from all of those local boards. Um, so it logically makes sense. Although it makes logical sense, we understand that it is immensely frustrating that this project has been going on for the better part of two years in Eagle Road. And, you know, we, we hear the complaints, we can pass them on to PICO, but we don't have any control. We can't force them to do it. Um, so it is, it's beneficial to let us know, but it's also beneficial for the residents themselves to lodge complaints if they have them with the Public Utility Commission, because that is the governing body for PICO. Um, the township has no authority over PICO on this project. They don't come to us to ask for the permits for the road. They don't come to us to ask where their equipment needs to be stored. Um, anything they do for us in, in that regard is purely voluntary. Um, so, you know, I, we all understand the frustration. Uh, I certainly do, and I've been, you know, um, I've been diverted and driving around town, and, you know, the, 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 the equipment has been on my street, and I've heard the, the trucks at night. Um, so we understand the frustration, but our, our hands really are tied uh, in terms of yeah, I making mean, change. Yeah, just to tie into what you said, we had an issue over on Lanark Avenue where they came in and just, just clear cut 30 trees, just cut them right down mm -hmm. because they're going to put in new poles. Now, they didn't tell anyone ahead of time that they were bringing in somebody to cut these trees down, and 30 trees were cut down, and nobody knew what was going on. So I'm, um, you know, I'm playing, you know, catch up with with a lot of these issues. So because they can come in and they can cut them down and they don't have to tell us what they're doing. Yeah. So we had to we had the Lori and uh, Lori, is Lori there? Yeah. So Lori got in touch with Pico and we worked out what we were going to do over there. But. I mean, for a couple of days, nobody knew what was happening. They did it on a Friday night, too, like a Friday evening. I, I agree with, with what everyone's saying, and I agree that our hands are tied somewhat, but there's a significant amount of work that's being performed in the first ward, and there's a lot of frustration because, you know, there's damage to a lot of properties. And I think the one thing that we could do is just, if they could come and give an update, so that the residents hear what they're doing, what they're doing, not that we're doing anything, but they're doing. Whoever, I mean, whoever took Ralph Brown's place, maybe he can come in. Is he He's facilitating back. it? Uh, the the uh, individual was appointed today from PICO, so there'll be a press, again, once I, re I receive an official notification of the gentleman's name. I, I, I was told today who he is. I don't know him, I never met him, but uh, it'll be official, I think, tomorrow morning. Once I get that, I'll forward it. So maybe that'll be a good timing when, um, once he's official, uh, I can invite him next month to the work yeah, session. Yeah, you invite him next month and we could talk about, you know, what people need to do if they have damage to their property and they, at least he can hear yeah, some of they, those concerns and, and give suggestions and yeah, timelines. If they're doing that much work, they may want to come here 
uh, you know, at the commissioner's meeting or to a work session and tell us what they're doing and, and what their future projects are so that we're, we're ahead of the game, not 30 trees down and, and, and people very upset that, that, uh, and they don't know what happened. They did, they, I was going to say, they did put a program together for us uh, several years ago at the, um, I think it was at Chestnut Walt School, mm -hmm. when we had the issues with a lot of the trees and what have you, they did come out and do a community public relations program, yep, I was there. Uh, which I thought there. was an excellent yeah, we program. If they have an opportunity that they would like to put something like that together uh, regarding all our utilities in the township, that would be great. Larry, Larry with the understanding, uh, as you said, that you know these timetables change based on when they open it up and what they find in there, um, have they, what is the latest time frame for the work that's on Eagle Road now? Uh, as of today, 10 o'clock today, when we met, uh, the main will be um, pretty much the main along Eagle Road is done. They'll start services, connecting to the services. They'll so, it, unfortunately, uh, it's still going to be nighttime work, um, but it should have a less of an impact. Uh, it'll be less of equipment there, and they're telling us that that should be uh, with no um, issues <laughs> arising mid-October for Eagle Road for their completion. Uh, the good news on Glendale Road, they finished today. That main is in service. All the base repair will start um, hopefully by next week. And then it'll be followed up by PennDOT, who will do a full uh, pave. Uh, uh, Glendale Road will be paved from Westchester Pike to O'Hara. So the two major state roads, uh, the updates as of today at 10 o'clock. That road is in really bad shape. Right. Larry, without... Just, just not only Pico, but Aqua. In my ward, Aqua's done a significant amount of work. Mm -hmm. um, do they have? A, are they going to do the fifty percent paving projects on the residential streets? They have to, yes. Uh, but if they is do, it, is it going to be done before freezing time this year? Well, because these things are they're as bad as Eagle Road. Some of the yeah, I, we can't guarantee that. Uh, and again, remember the the, the the policy is if you if they do a continued trench, which most of the work that's most being, of the work's finished now. Yeah, yeah. most of those. It, it, but if they do a road opening, it's got to be three within 100 feet, correct, Dave? That's a township ordinance. Yep. Yeah. yeah. If they do three within 100 feet, then they they, they have to do a half mill and overlay. But most of the work that they're doing when they're putting in mains and yes, 90% uh, of it will be a half mill and overlay. Uh, will it be done before the winter? They can't guarantee this because they have to do a base repair first. That has to sit for an amount of time. Right. As long as the plants don't close, it's their it's their goal to do that as well. Yeah, because the, the patching work is poor. We're going to have a lot of water infiltration well, and freezing. It's just going to get and worse. It be, yeah, I don't it remember becomes, the, the, the it becomes patchwork a challenge is awful for, the, for everybody along Glendale Road. The, oh, the patchwork there was awful. Yeah. All of it. Needed. It's worse yeah. on the side streets. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know. Well, Hard once Glendale Road's done, then it's become a speed highway, and the chief will be down. <laughs> right, one more thing to give you an example. Like they did Westgate Hill. They did Westgate Road. All right. Yes. Okay. So they did Walnut Hill Lane. I think a year ago, and they ran the main. They ran the meters to the homes. I'm on the corner, so they didn't do mine. Right. But then they did Westgate Road. Nobody came to me to say they were going to put a main in. They sent me a letter. They're going to shut my gas off. Well, apparently, Mr. D'Amelio, you didn't listen to my speech, what I just told you. No, I, I'm, I'm just so saying. Crazy. Paul Pico. <laughs> I did. I, I, there was a number on there. I called them. I the promise you I will have the new representative. Um, but I'm trying to show you how it's, I, it can be frustrating and, and confusing. And residents, you know, we just need to guide them to, you know, I mean, you want me to call the Public Utilities Commission when my dance is <laughs> off? I'm calling you up. Well, I think Mrs. Winterbourne. I'm going to come over to your house in the wintertime. All right. Well, listen, why, why have very you, much. if yes. I could, just I'm give sure, Mr. Quick. D'Amelio, that your constituents are going to be happy to know that you've been as victimized by PICO oh. as the rest of them have. So <laughs> at least you have that going for you. All right, Mr. Gentilly, you have just, uh, yeah, follow just up a follow Just a couple other little uh, things. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't think that was going to take so long. But the uh, just you all aware we, we've in, implemented a lot of the grants. Uh, in the township, one of the big initiatives that uh, Mr. Pannoni has been helping us with and his staff is uh, the multimodal uh, grant mm -hmm. on Darby Road. And, uh, we, phase one was completed. Phase one consisted of from, uh, from the middle school, the new crosswalk, uh, all new ADA accessibility, both in front of the school. So the school benefited greatly uh, from our uh, multimodal grant. Uh, phase two now starts, well, it will go from the uh, orthodontist down to the library. Mm -hmm. 
and then go, go through. there'll be a new crosswalk coming across over to 1502 Darby Road. So uh, that should we're hoping to have all that done late uh, late November, sometime in December. Um, but part of Phase One, and that was a big big component of uh, we, we installed 240 foot of um, underground uh, basin. Uh, control for rate control, meaning so when we have uh, flooding issues, Dave, I'm probably not going to be as eloquent as you, but the, when the water goes in, it's rate controlled before it goes into our storm system. Slows the water down, improves um, sp specifically any of the areas down downstream there. Down uh, Mill Road. So it yeah. certainly helps. That, uh, and then in phase two, there's also going to be stormwater improvements along the new um, streetscape where uh, all those new plants that we do, road, yeah. uh, water will run off and do, um, again, rate control in there as well. So that's a, f a phenomenal initiative. We actually just put in an, for another multimodal grant um, Dave and his staff helped us with. And if we are lucky enough to get that, it would be a, a similar project that will go from the brick and brew down to um, Benedict Avenue. And then we also met with uh, PennDOT and Delaware Valley Regional Planning and the Delaware County um, Planning Commission. Uh, last week, Mr. Pannoni and his staff met with me out at PennDOT. We're putting in for a, a, a TAP grant. I know it's not probably called tramp or TAP anymore, but it's the... Um, transportation alleviation projects something like that Dave and that it would be for us to build a footbridge over Manoa Road so the Penzi trail that we have now it will continue that all the way down and dump into the to the end of the LA Fitness that initiative right now again they're they're not exact numbers but they're close to it 1.4 million dollars so if we're lucky enough to get that grant uh, there is a going to be uh, a commitment on the township somewhere in the area about three to four hundred thousand dollars. The good news is uh, there's a lot of benefits, but that would be a worthwhile investment. But we're looking if we get approval, that's a 2019 project. What I'm mm -hmm. being told. Um, that's the update today. Did you want to add anything to them? Right, so the board has any questions. You say no, I just I just want to reiterate how this. this okay, okay, stop. It, stop. <laughs> I just want to reiterate how that. Um, Darby Road from the junior from the middle school all the way down to Mill, that's at the top edge of the Chatham Glen water basin. Yep, yep, that's the top of what we call a drainage basin. That's that's the top of that drainage Ex basin. Exactly, but right. Anytime any drop of water that falls in front of the middle school, as Larry indicated, gets intercepted by the basin we put in, held back, where it would have ran down unimpeded to Chatham. So we're starting, we're doing storm, what we call stormwater management. We're doing it at the top of the basin. We're kind of lucky the job's at the top of the basin. That gave us a little better, a um, uh, little more straightforward impact on, on mitigating that. And that, so, and then this is that part of that China Glen project that we've been working on now for nine or eight years. That, uh, and I, I can't thank, you know, the, the township staff and Pannoni Associates for absolutely, I know it's, I've been, it's been grueling. I know I'm, I'm sorry that I have been at your necks for you know this long or what have you, but it's absolutely a project that is so beneficial to the community, and I greatly appreciate all the all the thousands of dollars, and not to mention the hundreds of uh, man hours that went into that, what have you. In the so next phase, as Larry mentioned, that we're, we're, we have, and we did some of these down in the Ardmore section too. We're putting in those stormwater planters. The green infrastructure, the tree planters, we intercept the waters, it runs right off the sidewalk, put them right into the planters, we put, we put modified soils below the trees in the planters to help uh, retain it and recharge it. So it's, it's pretty good stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's all the, not the bleeding edge green infrastructure, <clears throat> but right in the solid, solid front of it. It's great stuff. It's great stuff. It, it's how Harvard Township is being committed to, to address uh, Stormwater management and uh, not the climate change and what have you. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, I did want to mention on the other grant, on the... Is my mascara running? Tiki. <laughs> um, is that that, that footbridge across, um, across there will uh, give those, stu those students who go to school a safe 
way to get to the middle school and the high school without having to cross Manoa Road, which is dangerous in that section there. And for all those who live on Woodland Drive and on uh, Naylor's Run and on Lanark Avenue, um, a big thanks goes out to Peter Puglianese, who, who really pushed to get this uh, and helped me a lot on this, on this particular project and helped the township a lot um, on the project. Uh, also, in that area, not only that is, we're going to put in some um, stormwater management into that trail area so that the water goes into the ground and a lot less of that water is coming down onto Woodland Drive um, and and getting um, becoming a problem for some of the basements of the people on Woodland Drive. So um, big thanks to Pete, who's we're working through some rain gardens, uh, berm, and some other things over on on Lanark Avenue and that bridge across with the trail, which would bring safe. It's a safe route to school. Um, anybody in that area who has children who would want to go to Bailey Park can walk across there without that having you know without taking your life into your own hands and crossing Manoa Road and you'll. You'll be able to cross Manoa Road over the footbridge if you're on the sidewalk on Manoa Road. So you'll be able to walk up and across and then back down if you need to. Uh, because it is so dangerous there, it's hard for people to see when they're coming, they're coming down the hill and it's an angle. It's hard for you to cross that street. I mean, you're taking your life into your hands. So this would be, this would be um, a big... Are you big talking about where the old trestle used to be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what are they going to do there? They're going to put a bridge across, a walking bridge. Oh, they the haven't done that back. yet. No, no, they have not done it. It's okay. 2000, probably 2019, if we do get the grant, because it's over a million dollars. It's very promising because what you said is a good point, Mr. Olivas, uh, and I failed to mention that. The proximity of uh, Chatham Glen School, the middle school, and Manoa School all fit in within uh, the, the radius that we, what qualifies that for a uh, safe to schools grant. So it's, <coughs> it's very attractive and... Um, it was very received yeah, very on a positive yeah. note from the, the planning commission and as well as Delaware Valley Regional Planning. So, so today, if you have if you have a child who is who has you know um, who's in a a wheelchair who is in something like they can't get across there easily. Whereas, in if you they were on that trail, they could go up and down. They can ride their bikes across that sort of stuff and not have to worry that they're crossing Manoa Road. And, and there's no park in that section, so they have to cross the street to go to Bailey. I, I totally agree with you. The only thing you're going to have to be cautious of is, you remember, they took the trestle down so, because they put bus routes on. They're going to have to make the trestle yeah, higher. The, bri okay. the bridge is going to be higher than yeah. 14 foot so that, it, so that the buses and trucks that used to get caught. I remember it was on a regular basis. You would, they'd be uh, deflating the tires to get the trucks to go through there on a regular basis. Good job. Good job. Anything additional? Is that it? Okay, moving forward. Uh, next week, we do have several ordinances and a resolution. The Brittany Lane uh, dedication is a second reading. Any comment, questions? The, um, let's see, we have the property tax credit for the volunteer fire fighters. That is a first reading. Just one thing on that. We're <clears throat> here where it says, um, whereas the annual cost two, it says tow. So uh, you're at the fourth whereas. It says the annual cost tow, have it for township taxpayers. Just a typo. You just got to take the E out. There, there's some other things. That the final the document that we have in our packet is probably not quite the final document yet. There's still some things with the criteria. Um, it's also okay. the desire of the township staff instead of having to make this an annual reappointment or re resolution, resolution that we do it a one-time uh, thing so we get the criteria tightened down from the Bureau of Fire. I think we've got one or two ver iterations of this thing floating around. Uh, it's my understanding as the committee member that the retention committee forwarded to the Bureau of Fire for approval of the criteria method. So it's at the Bureau of Fire level now out of the retention committee. So that should be the bureau that's going working with the township staff, Amy on the finance to do that. So we'll get the language uh, cleared up for next week and have the final draft of that going. Okay. We're so which was already voted on by the bureau of fire. The yeah. But there's some We're changes. We're waiting for data as to what this was actually going to amount to. 
Yeah, well, it depends, it depends on how many people meet the criteria. Mrs. Cuppertson actually has that. Yeah, there's, there's a rough guess. Yeah. Actually, excuse me, um, members of the Bureau of Fire did come and give us some information that was helpful. All five fire companies gave us who they thought were, was eligible for this at this point in time. Came to approximately 105 volunteers in the township right now. And we're equating that we took everybody's assessment of the property they own and a 20% credit. Came to about $28,000 would be the financial impact of doing this. Which is, I, I think we, we even talked about that last month or what have you. And that's All right, I'll just give you quite the, small. Bill, are you doing? What, I mean, it's, there's, you know, you there's, a, look there's a couple other things in there that I. Yeah, there's some, there's some language in there that talks about the value of, you know, a paid department, what it would save, and that, that doesn't belong in a resolution like that. We don't have hard data. We haven't done a formal study on the exact savings, so it's not appropriate that any numbers like that be part of something that we would pass. It's just a guess. It's, it's the work of a couple of individuals saying that, you know, we think of this based on other uh, things. But we, we know it's a substantial savings throughout not only here in Haverford, but throughout the Commonwealth, because mm -hmm. most of the municipalities, non-first-class cities, are all volunteer departments. So we know it's a substantial savings. I mean, you guys, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out we're spending $2 million on fire trucks this year in one year. Mm -hmm. So o over time, if you add the personnel to staff that 24 by 7, it's a very significant amount that the volunteer organization yes. saves us. But it's not an exact science. It's, it's in the millions of dollars, but it's probably... We don't have exact figures, but that doesn't belong in that resolution anyway for the credit anyhow. So okay, so they're they're going to redo because I have there was a couple of things, but right. I'll just and, and if I'll it's just okay with the board, myself and Mr. Wexler are going to be uh, at the uh, Bureau of Fire meeting at the end of the month. What I would like to recommend that we take again because there's so many versions have been going back and forth that I'm so even we probably confused. put this off for another month. It, I would like to go back to the Bureau of Fire with Mr. Wexler and we sit down and have them formally approve. Mm -hmm what's in front of us, and then we, myself and Bill, can come back. Um, I was just going to say, there's two elements that aren't in any version that's going around, and actually um, um, we had some education from McNichol Byrne on a couple different things to put in. One is a process for appeal that has to be in the final version, and the other, Kelly, can you, what is the other, the I don't recall off the top of my head. <laughs> There's another um, minor thing, but some the guidance came down from the yes, state on it, it. So we provided it to the township to look at it. Um, so if you want to delay it another month to look at that guidance, I mean, we'd want to get. Let's, I'd rather do it right once than yeah. do it twice. Yeah, and I, there, there should be no problem once uh, myself and Mr. Wexler go to the Bureau of Fire. We get the uh, recommendations from Kelly, and Amy's been um, pretty much spearheading this for me. Uh, we'll come back and have this. This should be no issue for the October agenda. Or for your only we can get in for the 2018 absolutely should be budget under, under no no problem yeah, should be a problem that. yep yep that's our concern mrs cupperson thank you very much for i know it's been like two and a half years <laughs> putting all this together thank you um are we interested in lobbying the county to enact something similar to give our firefighters relief at the county level this was I mean, done at the state level. This, state. this was the state this that state. passed it in November. Yeah, Kelly can and the, the state, um, yeah, but there are no state property taxes. No, and the, the state act only authorizes this for, for the municipality. municipal uh, real estate taxes, not for county real estate taxes. Or school district. Couldn't get the blessings of the school districts. It was probably. school district. It's actually... <laughs> but the, the school district is a different story. I mean, I think the county... That's the county. You the know, bulk of the county and, and the, the fact is... Um, a third to a half of our bill is a trash fee and, a, and, our, and our sewer, um, which won't be affected by this, um, won't be affected by this discount. I think we should all lobby the state to amend this to include the counties because they would get, uh, they actually would get just about the same amount of relief from the county since the county tax, the entire county tax bill is based solely on your property as opposed to our township bill, which has several elements to it that aren't based on your millage. Mrs. Cupperson? My memory came back to me. The other concept that we do need to add that's not in any version that you've seen is just the fact that this is more of a refund as opposed to a credit. It's called a credit. But the bill will go out to all the eligible persons as it is today. It'll be billed in full. It will be paid in full. And then within a certain time period, we will issue a check back to the property no, owner for the credit. It is. Even though it is called a credit throughout all the legislation, it is really a rebate. Can the county do it anyway? 
specifically the, the law statute. Which is <laughs> our state hard at work. Yeah, All right. It's actually very oh. specific that there's no mention of credit on the tax bill. That was the the um, information that came out from PSATs, not yeah, to mention credit on the tax bill. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cupman. Thank you. That was so somebody. And Mrs. Sullivan, thank you very much for that. Um, okay, we have, is anybody, we, we have one, two, three, we have one on the um, RHM, uh, the gathering in parks, the backyard hens. Does anybody have any questions, concerns regarding any of those documents, any of those ordinances? I do have the backyard hens. Backyard hens? Okay. Okay, that's P17, 2017? Yeah, just in uh, number six, uh, just a typo here. It says owners should be owners in parentheses. The S needs to be added there. Uh, on number six. Number six, the coop and the attached pen must confirm to all relevant property setbacks for accessory structures as specified in um, subsection 4910.b unless, written, unless yeah. written in agreement adjoining property owner or owners. So you got to put the S in there. So it would be a, a bracket S? Yeah, bracket S. And that's, that's all I, that's all it was Simple. that I saw. Okay. Other than that, it looks good. But there was um, a yeah. reason why we, if we gone back and done the analysis as to why we instituted this prohibition in the first place and how we match our neighboring municipalities who have restrictions on chickens. We, we have. Right. We, I think so. Uh, so, she came here uh, the other day and came here at last work session and spoke about it. Yeah. Or health. The, I, uh, I, I, I admit I did not make the last work session. So okay. I'm All assuming right, from the silence of my health colleagues. Department, so the health department was here. They were yes. here. Yes, okay. absolutely. And they spoke. She knew what Lower Marion did, but she was going to research what Upper Dog yeah, and Nate, Springfield and stuff. Well, uh, which they don't actually have one. I think um, who instituted it for one year? And now it's her. Lower, 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 Lower Marion. Lower Marion did a pilot program, but now they have it. No, 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 that wasn't Lower Marion. There wasn't Low, Lower Marion? Lower, Marion, thought, Lower Marion's allows for two chickens. Two adding, small adding small fowl are, are allowed. It was somewhere in New Jersey where they they started it as it was a. Local. No, it wasn't that local. Chris, I think Mr. Bates could give us all those answers possibly next week at the meeting. Or was it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It was in New Jersey. Am I correct? Adding yeah. Them. Yeah. It was. Yeah, uh, and they had tried it out on a on a temporary basis for one year and after that one year they found that they had no issues and so they they made it law at that point so that may be something we want to do to give it an opportunity to see what how things work out and that if it actually doesn't cause a um, an issue and then we can make it law when when it doesn't okay food for thought um, next week that if anybody wishes to speak on this okay on agenda item certainly come up. I have a question about the park ordinance first. Park ordinance, okay. Yeah. Uh, two things, do we ever, it, it includes fireworks. Do we ever grant permits for fireworks in the parks? Never have, not, can, not you, 35 years. <laughs> Tim has said no, not in his 35 right. years. So why, why not eliminate the fireworks as even an option if, we're, if we haven't done it and considering the safety issues, um, I'm a little concerned. And then the other thing is we have, and I, I, I look, there are 20 instances in, the, in our ordinances, and this is one of them, that mentions the township secretary, but it's never defined. And I don't believe anyone applies to the township secretary for a permit in the park. So why not designate the proper entity? You know, if we're going to From the township forth, secretary. It doesn't. And who is the township secretary? I, mean, I think it's yeah. Yeah. That's it. But it doesn't. Yeah. It I mean, doesn't say it in our charter or in the code. That, that's the interesting thing. Um, nowhere is the township secretary defined, but it appears twenty times. I assume it's Mr. Gentili, but you know, it doesn't I say. I so. thought it was secretary or or township designee. This doesn't say that. That's why I raise it because I looked at it and said this is this unusual. Right here. Well, I was under the. Understanding that the yeah. township secretary yeah. was Larry Jean yeah. until, but we all have an understanding, but we don't have it anywhere. Is there in our, right. in so, our so you want to add that to 
do we want to add that to? Well, I think it sh should be the township manager then, or, or his designee, because that is defined in the code, and I would remove fireworks. Since but I, I wouldn't, but the only thing we're doing in this text amendment is E. Correct, but while we're correcting it, why not address those, the other points? You want to do housekeeping? Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if, if as Mr. Danny says, we've never issued a permit in 35 years, why have that even in the ordinance I don't and know if fireworks? Ever, I don't know if anyone's ever asked. I mean, well, Lanark does a private display. I mean, if any civic association next year decided to get the insurance necessary and do whatever and have a mm -hmm. try to have a fireworks display, I okay. imagine we wouldn't stop them provided they got the appropriate fire department yeah, approval and protection. When anybody asked to have anything related to fire, we always defer to the fire company, the local fire company. You know, if they're going to have a family barbecue or whatever, we tell them. Then why not fire properly company. have that in our ordinances rather than have it as something that's the township manager or the township secretary, you know, have it correct? As far as I know, the only place you can have it and have it for townships is at Lenore Country Club. That's the latest I know. But this says differently. Right. So. Could do it at the I mean, they've had it at Haverford High School, and that didn't work, and yeah. Veterans Field I think Field you're trying work. to fix a problem that isn't, fixing something that isn't broken. I, I just don't, I don't think we need to touch A, B, C, or D. This is, a, this is an ordinance about just changing 25 to 15, and I don't have any idea whether there's any mention of fireworks anywhere else in our code. I don't know what our history is before 35 years ago. I don't know what we want to do next year about fireworks. I wouldn't suggest that we have a debate about fireworks in a conversation about a text amendment of just changing permitted parties and gatherings from 25 to 15 people. We actually have fireworks provisions in there that are separate. That's why I'm just looking now. Well, uh, well, if you want to make a change, then we could do it at the ne at the meeting, um, and we'll either this strike it or we'll or we'll put it in. Could do it at the crack. Okay, but those are your concerns, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Duly noted. Does anybody else have anything? Motion to adjourn. Oh, do, uh, it's <laughs> anything for the MMO. Wow. Certainly, Amy can make a quick uh, statement about the MMOs that are that we have to um, accept every year. Yes, this is an, an annual <laughs> exercise that we do. Every municipality has to certify its MMO by September 30th of each year. Um, this is going to put us on the hook for at least what we have to budget as part of the 2018 budget. So what we want to do is the figure that's on line nine of the police and civilian plan that is the minimum, whether as part of the budget process we decide to fund more than the minimum, as we've been doing for the past several years, which, as we know, has gotten our funding percentage up pretty significantly over the past few years. We'll have to see if we can do that again once we get through the budget process this year. But for this purpose, what we want to do is just certify the minimum, and like I said earlier, that, that just puts us on the hook for at least putting the minimum municipal obligation in the 2018 budget. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Does anybody have anything else for the interest of the board? One thing, and Lori sent this email to us. Is that all right if I report on it? Uh, Nancy had sent an email saying that she sent an update regarding backyard chickens. She contacted Delaware County municipalities. None of those that responded allowed chickens in yards with setbacks less than 25 feet. Lower Marion, uh, they allow two chickens on properties that don't meet the setback requirements of 50 feet he stated this is quite popular and has responded and has responded to chickens running at large properties having more than two allowed chickens removing deceased chickens he has responded to noise and odor complaints but stated they are normally corrected after one visit okay all right thank you very thank much you. anything further all right question i'll make a motion to adjourn so moved. All those in favor? Aye. We'll see you next week, next Monday. <laughs>